Hi friends, welcome back. We have a lot going on in the kitchen today as usual. Let's see, what do we do? Uh, we made some beef bone broth so that we could make a delicious vegetable beef soup. Well, it doesn't have any beef in it, but we used the beef bone broth in it, so that was really tasty. We're also gonna bake some cookies that I had frozen in the freezer from a few months back. I'll leave that video linked down below if you're interested in some oatmeal pumpkin spiced cookies with chocolate chips because I love chocolate in everything, don't you too? Yes, no? Do you love chocolate? I love chocolate. So we also, what did we do today? I feel like I did more. Oh, we made a delicious rye with cornmeal bread today in our bread machine, but surely you can make that without a bread machine. I just prefer my bread machine because I can do other things while my bread does what it needs to do. So that was really, really tasty. And let's see what else do we have going on? Oh yeah, I also installed a new fan. Yeah, updates and more updates and lots more updates. So let's see, I'm gonna refresh my bedroom a little bit and refresh the living room. So let's see if we get to all of that in this vlog today. Get yourself a cup of tea, hang out with me. We're gonna have a good time. Let's get into this video. Life has been crazy busy and just crazy messy and crazy all the things. So I'm gonna try to get some soup broth going right now with you. We're gonna make some beef broth with our beef soup bones. And we have an onion here. We're gonna start our oven. I'm gonna bake it at 400 degrees start. I'm gonna get that going because what I wanna do is um, put these beef bones on this parchment paper. along with the onions and what other, whatever other vegetables that you want to go into the oven to be roasted to be a part of your beef bone broth. But we're just gonna go ahead and open up these soup bones and then we are going to throw these on the roasting pan and just roast them real good. Get them to where they're nice and browned because that's where a lot of your flavor, oh, I don't have an apron on today. Oh, regrets, regrets are gonna be made. Um, I don't know if I can get this apart, but maybe they are, maybe they're not. They'll fall out as they bake, but you want them to like brown up nicely to get all your flavor, you know? So we're gonna just open this up as much as we can, as much as we can for right now. Because I don't have time to deal with cleaning the cutting board and it has breadcrumbs all over it, I don't care. I just get a new cutting board and throw it on top of my big cutting board and life goes on just like that. All right, so sometimes when life is messy, we just overlook the mess because we've got to get stuff done and have a lot to do. I've got food I need to prep. I've got a house I need to clean. I've got things to tidy up. I've got areas to remodel and I'm trying to decorate this house a little bit nicer for, uh, for like if we move, when we move, when all that goes down. I wanna be able to sell this house and I know it will sell, um, but I wanna be able to market it for top dollar. So I'm gonna be really busy over the next couple months doing some different updates. And I'm curious, do you guys wanna come along for that? Do you wanna see what I do? Because I've done updates in the past on my channel when my channel was a lot smaller. So I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a bedroom update, a bedroom refresh for fall, winter. And I'm gonna be sharing with you guys like a living room update and nothing too crazy. We just need to re refresh some things around here. Things are a bit dated and they have been dated because I keep having babies and I don't take time to decorate my home. But now that I'm not pregnant and I still have babies, but oh no, I didn't mean to do these this small. Don't be like me, don't do these this small. These, these, okay, this is gonna be for my soup. Because if I chop them up this small and throw them in the oven, they'll just burn to a crisp. So we'll save these. This is food prep for another day. We're just making our life a little bit easier here. All right, we gotta keep these chunks big. I almost did it again. I can't talk and work at the same time because I'm not getting it done. Yeah, we're just gonna stuff some of these in here. And then the rest are gonna go just around it on the bottom. Salt and pepper it. No, always in front of my face. I blame people, it's my fault. 
I'm the one to blame. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. All of this is going to go into my broth, but I'm not going to put it in the oven because it'll burn. Get this lots of flavor with lots of pepper. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Winging it. I don't know if this is... Somebody said that they appreciate how I cook intuitively. I don't know if it's just I don't have time to look up recipes and I'm just going to do it um, myself. Or I read like 75 different recipes and I go, okay, I got this ingredients from that recipe, this ingredients from that recipe, those ingredients, I'm just going to... Or I say, this is what I have, this is what I'm going to do, and that's what I end up with. And I don't expect my food to taste like anybody else's, and I don't expect anybody else's food to taste like mine, because we all put love into it, and we all put a little bit of different kind of love into it, you know? Like what someone else loves and the flavors that they have and that influence their life, what they've been exposed to and everything is going to look different than what I, the journey I've been on. So just like that, our food is going to taste different. Our food's going to look different. Look, I gave up a long time ago trying to make something taste like somebody else's because I was always left feeling like a failure. Just know that you can make food with your own twist, your own flavor, your own kind of love put into it and it's gonna be amazing. And it doesn't have to look like mine or taste like mine, it's gonna be yours. All right, these are going into the oven. Sometimes I do carrots, um, I'll do carrots and celery. I'm gonna look for all of that and as I find it, I'll just open the oven and throw it in there. But Katie got busy and she never found the carrots or the celery or anything else to roast in the oven with her beef because the sunlight is shining on this food so beautiful. Next up, I'm gonna be making a Swedish rye bread. One third cup cornmeal, so. For this Swedish rye bread, I am going to be using what I have around the house, and I have some rye flakes that I'm going to use. I also have some whole corn that I'm going to be grinding up. So I'm just measuring out what the recipe calls for with all of these, and I'm throwing it in my grain mill. And then whatever I need extra at the end, if I don't have enough of these ingredients in my bowl, I'm going to mix them all together. I'm going to just substitute in some white flour, some all-purpose flour, to make up for what I'm lacking. Okay, so we've got one and a quarter cups of water. And to that, we're gonna add a bunch of, a bunch of honey. It calls for four tablespoons, so I'm just gonna eyeball it and try to stop the madness. One, two, three, four. And of course, one to grow on. Two tablespoons, so one, one, two, three, four, two. One to grow on, that's why not. And it says we need one and a half teaspoons salt. I think I'm out. No, I got enough. That's actually probably it. One and a half teaspoons of salt. One and a quarter cups of rye flour. So we'll go and pretend that this is water, honey, salt, vegetable oil. So we're going to do, we're going to pretend one and a quarter cup rye, one and a half cups white, so one and a half cups white, and then we want to go a third cup Cornmeal. Ooh, that's not quite a third cup. We have to do some substitution here. Third cup cornmeal. A little bit more white flour. Okay. And then we're gonna do one tablespoon yeast. One tablespoon. One tablespoon yeast. Let me take it to the bread machine. You may be asking yourself, how do any of these recipes turn out edible? And I often ask myself the same, but so far I haven't had too many fails 
in my recent years. I'm letting you in on my life here. Okay, this Instant Pot is dirty. I need to wash it. Once I get dinner going, this is my life. Once I get dinner going, I will clean up the rest of this mess. This has been cooking. Okay, so you can probably definitely cook this a little bit longer. I'm gonna go ahead and get going in my Instant Pot. It's nice and brown. It's gonna add a lot of flavor. And it's nice and roasted, beautiful coloring. And we're gonna throw all this in here. It's gonna make a wonderful broth. So for this soup, I'm gonna make like a beef vegetable stew soup. But right now for the broth, we're gonna do a handful, a handful of this freeze dried celery. This stuff has been amazing. Okay, we're also gonna do some ginger. Just to warm it up just a smidge. As always, in the usual lineup, broth lineup that I do, I do peppercorns, I do bay leaves, I do celery, onions, ginger, whatever you have. So about two teaspoons of peppercorns. Why not, you know? Do it big. Garlic. I'm going to throw some garlic in here. All right, let's get this going right here. I always unplug my Instant Pot when I'm done using it. So we're gonna hit. We're gonna do a meat stew on that, maybe a pressure cook. Just adding some hot boiling water in there. Definitely, definitely helps bring it up to temperature a lot quicker. I don't know why I feel rushed. I think I just feel like I need to get this done and cooking really good because what I'm going to do is take some of the broth off of this tonight and I'll show you guys that process but I'm going to remove the broth and make a soup with it and then we're going to continue to cook these bones are going to become perpetual bone broth and they're going to continue to cook for the next couple of days in here with boiling water and I'll take it out or simmering water and I'll take out what I need to for rice and for other dishes, but that's how we do perpetual broth. So I'm gonna add some more water in here and we're gonna, we're gonna keep it going. Grab a towel and help me get these dishes done. I could use the extra help today. Sometimes I have my kids unload the dishwasher before school. It just depends, you know, when you manage a home, there's so many moving parts and it's hard to always delegate to somebody else. So on this day, the kids got off to school and I was left with dishes to unload. This typically slows me down a lot in the kitchen. When I start the day with a dishwasher full, it really kind of boogers me up. Um, so I try to get it unloaded early, early, early in the morning as possible once the house wakes up because it does tend to be pretty noisy. I'm loading all the glass dishware, all the silverware is heavy and loud. Uh, so once the house is awake, we try to get that done, but it's probably what, 9.30 in the morning at this time and I'm getting it done, but I felt a bit frazzled up to this point because I couldn't get my sinks cleaned out and I feel like I can't start cooking and doing all of the things unless my sinks are clean. Do you ever feel like that? And that's how I feel. So when I showed you my Instant Pot, it was really stressing me out that I had dirty stuff in my kitchen and I was starting to cook. But if you know, broth is something that you just, if you're gonna use it for that meal that night, you need to start it as early as possible. So I just said, oh my goodness, I have to get this broth going right now. I have to get dinner going right now because it's gonna be an all day thing. And then I was able to take a deep breath and tackle the kitchen and get everything else kind of going, get things worked on throughout the day. And on this day, I also managed to that was actually what I did before I started cooking. I installed the light in the fan in the master bedroom. I did that as soon as the kids went to school. I came home and that was the very first thing I did and that took me about an hour to do. So if you watch a YouTube video on the internet, you can also learn how to replace your fixtures around your home. It's really simple. If you have a good electric box that is labeled, of, um, then you can, or breaker box, then you can turn off the electricity and just take before and after pictures of all your wiring and make sure that you're reconnecting the wires correctly. A lot of new uh, 
fixtures have diagrams and show you and tell you what colors to connect with what. So unless your house is super old, um, you know, if it's built in the last 20, 30 years, fixtures are going to be easy or simple to switch out. At least that's what I have found. So I was happy to be able to get that done on this morning. And then um, I was able to start my kitchen tasks, which, you know, I made the fan a priority. It was one of those things. I said to myself, if I don't knock this out right now, it's never going to get done. And sometimes in life, we just have to bite the bullet and say, okay, I know that I have other things to do, but this one thing needs to be done right now or it's never going to happen. So I started early in the morning because we have short days here. And if that fan was going to take me all day to figure out, I wanted it up by nighttime. So if I was going to need to make a trip to town for something, uh, that's why I felt installing the fan first thing in the morning was imperative. So got it done. Now we're on to this kitchen. This kitchen is going to be sparkling clean. We're going to scrub out these sinks. It's going to be beautiful and wonderful. And our day is just going to go smooth because mama's kitchen is tidy. Alright, time to hydrate again. Mom, you know your baby gets a hold of your cup, it's over with. I need to refill all my pantry. My pantry is struggling, y'all. I'm running out of everything. I mean, I'm not running out, just like all of my kitchen quantities. I'm like, look, like this. Almost out of salt. I'll be out of this. I need to refill it so I do a big generous pinch in there you can do honey or maple syrup this time I'm gonna do maple syrup just a just a, I did a little bit maybe maybe excess a little bit just a dab will do ya you can do apple cider vinegar or whatever but it just helps the water go down for me this basically has no flavor to it but just enough flavor. It's like somebody breathed on it. Somebody like took a bite of a lemon and was like, that's what it tastes like. dirty dishes in the bottom part of my dishwasher but I saved the top rack for right now to put all of my large dishes in to use as a drying rack so they'll just drip right there and then when I'm ready I'm gonna or when I'm done washing them all I'm gonna dry them off put them away and then finish loading the dishwasher and scrub out this stanky sink
These elderberries are a labor of love because I wash them really well, freeze them, and then pop them into the freeze dryer, and now I am working on storing them away. And I use a stay fresh freeze dryer for all of my freeze drying and food preservation needs, and it works beautifully to preserve them in their raw form, dried, so that when you rehydrate your food, it is just as it was prior to dehydrating it. And down below in this video's description, as always, I share with you guys, my code is Katie2022, and that gets you $50 off of the Stay Fresh freeze dryer. Right now, they do have it discounted, and you get to use my discount code on top of that. So go ahead and check out their link and scoop up one of these so that you can preserve all your soups and stews, all your leftovers throughout the winter. winter. It's a wonderful way to preserve your garden harvest in the summer and fall and a great way to make meals uh, to preserve for long-term use. These are excellent meals for hunting packs. When you go camping, hiking in the wilderness, you can have a homemade meal on the fly. Just add boiling water. It works great. And these elderberries rehydrated look and feel just like a fresh elderberry. It is a beautiful way to preserve your food. All right, so we've got the onions sauteing. We're gonna throw in some zucchini that I had in the fridge that needed to be used up. And then we're gonna throw, we're gonna make this super easy tonight. We're gonna throw in some garlic. Um, the broth has been cooking with all of those seasonings. So we're gonna definitely add the broth. Get all of this going real good in here. We're going to do some Italian seasoning in this today. And that's really what makes your beef vegetable soup. And also we have some leftover hamburger we can throw in there, or we can throw in the meat that's been stewing off the bones. We'll just take a look here in a minute and see what that broth is looking like. So this is going to be kind of like an Italian seasoning-esque, you know, vegetable soup. Bag of organic vegetables, frozen veggies, whatever you have. What's the plot? Okay, about two teaspoons of salt in there right now. Remember that pumpkin we had the other week we made? I haven't used it yet for pies. It's just been sitting in my fridge. It's been ready though. So we're just gonna add a little bit of celery. So this is some fresh celery that I chopped up and froze to make life easier. I forgot about it. I was gonna dehydrated celery. But I was looking in my freezer and I was like, oh, what else can I throw in this soup? So we are gonna add um, probably a cup of this pumpkin to it as well. And then we'll do a um, container of tomato puree of some sort. So about a tablespoon of that will do. I'm just gonna sit here and cook for an hour and then we'll have a beautiful dinner. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted a clean spoon to put my pumpkin in there. Well, is what it is, kids. Does that look like about a cup to you? Ooh, this is a really thick puree. So this actually turned out really nice. It's gonna be awesome in my pumpkin pies. Mix that. We're gonna get this in there. I'm gonna mix a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. How much time I have. All right, I'm gonna put some broth in here and clean this out.
Look at this golden broth. This is the kind of stuff we should be eating, drinking, consuming daily anyway, by any means necessary. I mean, it's just such a powerhouse of nutrition jam packed into a beverage, essentially something you can drink. This soup has been cooking and it needs to cook some more and I'm debating right now whether or not I'm going to add some ditalini pasta. I definitely am. And then this is the Swedish rye bread. I omitted the caraway, but it's delicious. Okay, so this is what the roasted beef broth from this morning looks like. I have drained, what, six, eight cups out of it now. Um, and I started to add more, but I wanted to just show you what it looks like. And the meat is not tender yet, so it hasn't cooked in there quite long enough. Um, they are, it is like a really tough area of meat, whatever bones, these are leg bones. There's marrow, you see that big old, look, I'm going to pour water on it. This big old chunk of marrow right there, that's straight up marrow from one of the bones that popped out. So the other ones, I'm sure that marrow will come out as well. But I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse at this amazing goodness and it's going to cook all night on low but i'm just replenishing the water now so we can make some more nourishing broth there's still a lot of connective tissues and a lot of meat that needs to break down in there so you know your broth is done when everything just kind of dissolves in there and uh, actually it is kind of a bit tender so i could pull this out I can pull this out and see if I can get any meat off of there. This is all of the meat from the soup bones. So I can pull that out, take off some pieces of meat, throw that in my soup on the stove. Yeah, and then the bones are still in here. They're in the bottom. I don't know if I'll be able to scoop one up. There we go. So there's a bone. There's some marrow I just chunked out of there. Should have kept it whole. We can spread that on our bread. The marrow is so good to spread on bread. If you haven't dabbled in marrow bones, marrow bones with a little bit of salt and pepper, oh my goodness, the most delicious, not the bone, but the marrow. You get the marrow out of it. And uh, there's some more marrow. It's just like chunks and chunks floating in here, see? It is so good. I added, not this whole box, I added about a quarter of this box because I've been using it little by little in some different soups. Put some ditalini in here. It's going to cook up. It's way down there in the bottom. It's going to cook up and then I'll serve it. Wait till it's vlogmas. Vlogmas? That's too much pressure. Mom, sit down. Sir? Is it good, Riker? I think we need a bigger table. <laughs> Alright, so here we have a cookie sheet. This is my new TJ Maxx special. Here we've got some, I don't know, remember, I think these were like pumpkin cookies or something. <laughs> these are going to go in the oven. I don't know how long because I've never cooked frozen cookies before, but we're just going to wing it. As these came out of the oven, we enjoyed them, but I didn't grab any footage because sometimes, hey, sometimes a mama forgets. So check out the link down below in this video's description if you want to see how these cookies were made. Oh my goodness, I still have to deal with more of these elderberries. Over on my Instagram page, I went ahead and offered it up if anybody wanted elderberries. I'm selling them by the ounce, but I don't know. I think I've opened up a can of worms because I have so many elderberries. And typically I make and sell elderberry syrup every year, but I'm not doing it this year. I just don't have the time or the patience or the anything to get it done. So I'm not doing it this year. So I have all these elderberries and I'd like to sell them. So yeah, who knows? If you would like to do that, get in touch with me over on Instagram or you can email me. Uh, my email is always down below in the video's description box as well as my PO box. You can send me mail. Yeah, write to me. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up, that's a like, and until next time, I'll see you soon, bye.